The best way to cultivate and maintain a solid, healthy, long-term relationship is to avoid marriage at all costs. It is a bad idea for all involved, including women. But the stark contrast between the mentality of the average player in the NFL and the average player in the NBA, as far as availability is concerned, is constantly on display. The very best example I can think of in this regard is when Brooklyn Nets guard Ben Simmons decided he didn't want to play for the 76ers anymore. Now, wanting to move on is perfectly normal in this day and age. Not every franchise is right for every player. Sometimes a team and a player just have to go their separate ways. That's just a necessary part of life. But the way Simmons forced his way out of Philadelphia highlights exactly why marriage is bad for relationships. And stay with me here, guys, because I'm going to explain why. When Simmons decided he didn't want to play in Philadelphia anymore, he simply stopped showing up to the team facility. Not only that, he cut off all contact with the 76ers team management and front office personnel. Rather than fulfilling his contractual obligation to the team, he just didn't show up and went radio silent. His first excuse was his mental health. But when the Sixers told him they would help him with his mental health, he still was absent from the team facility. His next excuse was a conflict between team doctors in terms of how they were dealing with a particular injury he had. If it wasn't one thing, it was another. And before long, it became obvious to all involved that Simmons wanted out. After a while, reports began surfacing about a rift between him and Joel Embiid, the, best, the team's best player. That led to reported conflicts with the front office, which led to a daily media firestorm on whether or not Simmons would return to the Sixers or if he would be traded. Well, last October, the 76ers front office finally decided to suspend Simmons for one game for conduct detrimental to the team. It took him that long to flex their muscle, but it was pointless. It was clear that Simmons had made up his mind to never set foot at the 76ers team facility again. Now at this point, the team was entertaining trade offers from around the NBA. There were plenty of teams interested in acquiring his services, so finding another trade partner didn't really take that long. The Nets offered the 76ers the best package, which included James Harden, so Simmons was shipped to Brooklyn. And surprise, surprise, he hasn't suited up for his new team once since he's been traded. Gentlemen, this almost never happens in the NFL. Now, this doesn't mean football players don't regularly hold out during contract disputes, but these holdouts almost never rise to the level of the Ben Simmons fiasco, as NFL players are fined heavily for being absent. This works as an effective deterrent for any player who wishes to take the Ben Simmons route. Ben Simmons would not have pulled these shenanigans if he were a tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles. Why? Because as I stated before, NFL contracts are non-guaranteed. The only reason why Simmons got away with breaking his contractual obligation to the Sixers without suffering a significant financial loss is because his contract is fully guaranteed. And this is exactly how it relates to the institution of marriage here in 2022. Women are routinely disagreeable, unpleasant, and selfish while girlfriends are far more pleasant, accommodating, and agreeable. And the only thing that separates the two is that marriage license. A marriage license completely snuffs out any motivation a woman has to be a good woman, because that particular contract incentivizes bad behavior. But even more importantly, a marriage license gives something to a woman that they are ill-equipped to handle, and that is leverage. Women have absolutely no idea how poisonous the advantage of leverage is to them. Women who have leverage in a relationship are almost always poorly behaved because leverage is something most females have no idea how to use effectively. In relationships, leverage equals leadership whether, whether we realize it or not. And as we all know, relationships led by women lead to disaster. I don't need studies or statistics to prove this. All I need are my own two eyes and common sense. And when we take a look around at relationships as a collective, it is very easy to see that they are failing miserably. The main reason relationships are circling the drain is because they are being led by women. Women, most notably wives, are given this leadership role by default as soon as her husband signs that marriage certificate. Yes, she may have every intention of following through with her wedding vows, which is to honor and obey her husband, stick with him through sickness and in health, or for richer or poorer. But in the deepest recesses of her mind, she knows that she doesn't have to stick to her wedding vows. In the back of her mind, she knows that she holds all the cards. She also knows that as soon as she pisses a plus sign, she as good as owns her husband, regardless of the child's paternity, no less. So when it comes to a wife's appearance, her physical fitness, her attitude, her agreeableness, or lack thereof, subconsciously, she knows she doesn't have to put in as much effort as she used to before she got the ring. 
And more often than not, American wives choose not to put in any effort at all. This again is why marriage is bad for relationships. Marriage gives women a reason to slack off. It gives them a reason to stop investing in the relationship and sacrificing for their men. The best way to cultivate and maintain a solid, healthy, long-term relationship is to avoid marriage at all costs. It is a bad idea for all involved, including women. Yes, getting divorced e part is terrible for men. Let's get that right. But just because divorcees get the kids, the house, the dog, and half of his present and future earnings doesn't mean she's won. In fact, it's quite literally the opposite. Why? Because men of value aren't committing to single mothers. They may smash them every once in a while, but there's no way a man with options would ever consider taking a woman in her mid to late 30s with three children seriously. Another downside is that her children will be fundamentally broken. Single mothers are responsible for most strippers and criminals running around. It's an open secret that fathers keep daughters off stripper poles and sons out of jail. Women also have to consider the fact that when their children get older and learn of their treachery, that could potentially drive a rift between them. I speak from personal experience. So while women throw divorce parties and appear to be having a great time by reliving their youth, drinking and getting passed around, in an honest moment, these women will admit that being a single mother is a miserable existence after a while. It's all fun and games immediately following the divorce, but it eventually takes its toll on her and her children. Marriage is bad for relationships, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't always like this, but it most certainly is now. And if you are in a relationship with an attractive person who loves and respects you, then it would behoove you not to completely ruin it by getting married.